We are going to open up our convention today. Okay. You are sitting with your delegates from your state, and I'm going to be playing the role of George Washington today. When the delegates walked into the convention each morning, or sometimes at night, whenever they were, chose to have their meeting, they would greet each other pretty formally. So, you know, um, welcome Dr. Franklin, it was nice to see you last night, you know, thank you for coming today. You can go ahead and turn that off. Okay, so I want you to kind of greet yourself formally. You would have sh shaken hands, and remember to shake hands. You want to give a nice. You don't want to. You don't want to squeeze their hand to death, but you give a firm handshake to show a sign of respect to each other, even if you didn't get along with the delegates from the other states. Okay, so I want you to take about 30 seconds or so and just meet the delegates around you. Introduce yourself to the delegates around you. <laughs> Thank you, for, awesome. thank you for coming today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, if you will head back to your states, please. I'm going to use the gavel as a sign. Just I know you're going to be up moving around today. So I'll use that. Anytime you hear that, please head back to your, to your delegation. Okay? Um, one of the things at the, con at the convention, the Constitutional Convention, that we've got to take pretty serious is the rule of secrecy. And we've talked about that. Several of you have expressed concern that you don't want to worry people outside of Independence Hall. And I understand. I, feel, I want you all to be able to speak freely in here without concern of upsetting people back home, okay? So in order to do that, I'm going to ask you to please stand. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise, I promise not to divulge, not to, divulge to, the public, to the public what is discussed at this convention. Okay, and thank you. You may have a seat. Um, delegate from Delaware, can you please be the sergeant of arms today and just be sure that the door is, you know, don't let anybody in the door. If someone does knock at the door, we need to be careful there. Okay, so don't let anybody in. Okay, so the first issue that we've got to discuss today is in our new government, how are we going to be represented? How are your states going to have a say in our new government? Okay. There are a couple of plans that I know several of you have discussed with me, and I'm going to go ahead and start with James Madison in Virginia today. And if you all would come up and go ahead and explain to us what your idea, and we'll call it the Virginia plan, and if you all would come up and explain to the rest of the delegates what your idea is. You can use the board if you want. What? If you want, you don't have to use the board. Oh, or you, okay. 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 <laughs> so basically what the Virginia plan is, is it offers three branches of government, the judicial, the executive, and the legislative. And it also has two houses, the House of Representatives and the Senate. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, and how is, how, what is it going to be based off? How are we going to send people to this government? It's going to be based off what? Population. What? Population. The population. Okay. So as a big state, they're gonna big states are gonna like this idea for government, right? Because they're gonna get more power in the government. So on your piece of paper, let's just kind of write this out so we can see it on paper, okay? So the branches of government for the Virginia plan, and you can just copy down up here, we had the executive branch. judicial branch, and then we had a legislative branch under the Virginia, Virginia plan. And this is where our concern is. Um, James Madison, can you tell us, uh, once again, the legislative branch called for how many houses? Two. Okay. So it called for two houses. 
And do you know what they, do you remember what they were called? Yes, the House of Representatives and the Senate. Okay. So the House of Representatives and the Senate. Okay. And you all told me, can you correct it again? How was it organized? It was based off what? Population. Okay. So both of these houses are based off population. Okay. My last question, you know, I kind of kind of already gave you the answer. Noah, what kind of what kind of states are going to favor this plan? Large states, big states, small states, medium states? Large states. Large states are going to favor this. OK? OK, in your delegation, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to 45 seconds. And I want you to discuss, as a state, would you have favored this plan? And if not, what is maybe a better option? Okay, so at your state only, I just want you to discuss that those those questions. Okay. At this point, would your state have voted for this Virginia plan for representation in our new government? Virginia, you're going to support your own plan, right? Um, what about New Jersey? Would you have supported this plan? No. Why? Because we have our own. Oh, you have your own plan. Yeah. Okay, well, why don't you come up here? I think William Patterson, uh, William Patterson, why don't you come up here and explain your plan? Our plan was still three branches of government. Okay. Only one house where every state had one vote. Interesting. Okay. So we're going to call this the New Jersey plan. Okay, so you still, the New Jersey uh, plan still wants executive, judicial, legislative. They want one house, okay, and they want it based off what? What'd you say? Based off every state gets one vote. So equal representation. Every state equal. Okay, every state equal, one vote, however you want to word that. Virginia, what's the problem with this? Well, um, the bigger states are obviously going to need more representation. So if each state gets the equal amount, then you're going to have problems running into the bigger states versus the smaller states. Okay, so. What kind of state is going to favor the New Jersey plan? The smaller, states. smaller states. Okay, smaller states are going to favor this. Is it fair, and this is what we've got to decide, is it fair for large states to have more power in our government? They have more people? I don't know, you all decide. You all decide that. Is it fair? But. What about a state like New Jersey, who doesn't have as near as many peop, uh, high population as Virginia, but should they have an equal say, or should Virginia be more powerful, and I use powerful in quotes, should they be more powerful in our new government? I want you to take about 30 seconds to a minute to discuss that. I want you to decide that. <laughs> We think that it should still only have one vote, even if you're a big state, because one person. Should so each state would still be equal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Each state and has their they own should be able to solve problems of the smaller states, and the larger states are already. Okay. So I, I see some tempers starting to rise. Um, I, I didn't. Connecticut. I think you all have. Because um, if you all can't save the day, then. What, what's going to happen? Uh, several of you are ready to leave. I know that Ben Franklin is not feeling good. He is tired and he is not feeling good. I know he's ready to go. Um, so Roger Sherman, I know we had discussed something that might make both the small states and the large states happy. Could you come up and kind of share that with the delegates for us? We can keep the two House Congress, where the first house will be the House of Representatives. 
which will have the representatives from each of our states. In the House, the number of representatives from each state will be based on the state's population. So Virginia will have more representatives than New Jersey because of the state's population being higher. In the second House, we will call it the Senate. The Senate will have two senators in each, from each state. And then the senators will be elected by the state legisl legislators. Okay. So Roger Sherman gets the credit for saving the convention because before small states were arguing for New Jersey plan and large states were going after Virginia plan. And literally during this time frame, it took about, about three weeks debating the New Jersey plan and Virginia plan over and over every day. Debate after debate, fight after fight, not physical fight, but word fight. And, and it took a while. Yeah, right? Can you imagine Ben Franklin and uh, James Madison going at it in, in there? It'd be kind of funny. Um, Pull up that big leg, come at him. Well, Governor Morris, yeah, he would, that might be used as a weapon, right? He could have used it as a weapon. So, Roger Sherman, people are getting frustrated and people are talking to George Washington and telling him, you know, this is ridiculous. We're not going to solve this. Let's just, we can't revise the articles. This isn't working. And Roger Sherman kind of comes up with this plan and it gets the title of the Great Compromise. And he really come, goes down in history as saving the convention because he created a plan that both small states and large states are going to favor. Okay? So if you'll write this down, this is the Great Compromise. They still wanted the three branches of government. He was okay with the executive. He was okay with the judicial. And this is going to start looking familiar because this great compromise was approved and it is our form of government today, the legislative branch. Okay? So the legislative branch is going to be made up of two houses. This pleases the Virginia, okay? The first house is going to be the House of Representatives. I'm going to put House of Reps. And in the House of Reps, the way a state gets to send their a delegate is based off population, okay? So this is going to be based off population. favor this plan, Virginia or New Jersey supporters? Virginia. 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 Okay. So this is a piece of the Virginia plan. Large states are going to have more power in the House of Representatives. Now pretend I don't have a wig on right now and flip forward to today. In the House of Representatives today, your Californias, your Texas, your New Yorks, your Pennsylvanias, even Ohio, okay? High population, more representatives in the House, okay? Alaska, Hawaii, no, they're not going to have that many representatives. It's based off population. The second House that the Great Compromise called for was the Senate. What is this going to be based off of? Representation is going to be based off what? Our plan. What? Our plan. Your, the New Jersey plan, which said each state has one vote. Okay, so equal representation. Equal reps. Every state sends how many senators? Two. Every state sends two senators. Okay. Equal representation. Who's going to favor this? Small states, Small states are going to favor this. Okay. So this really solves the problem. And so now we can move on to even more controversial issues, which we'll do Monday, like slavery. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Slavery and how to elect our chief executive. Believe it or not, that's going to be a big issue. We don't want another King George, right? Okay. 
Okay, questions on Virginia plan, New Jersey plan, or the Great Compromise? Any questions? Okay. All right. You all did a wonderful job on that issue. And so I would like to thank you for that. You may um, say goodbye to your delegates. Okay, say goodbye to each other because I'm going to allow you to go back to your hotel for the evening. And uh, I know some of you are going to go over to the tavern. Uh, you may follow Governor Morris if you want. Okay. He may, he may lead the way over there. All right. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, thank you for assuming the role of a delegate and debating and compromising today. I appreciate it. So thank you very much for coming to the Constitutional Convention for today. You all have done more than your fair share of work and debating. I know it's been hard. Please stick with it, and we will pick up the issue of slavery tomorrow. Okay? You all are dismissed. <laughs>